I guess in the region it's still all about oil prices, really oil at 65, which is where we think it is going to be for the year as a whole. It's kind of also where we see it in the medium term. And when we kind of step back and think about oil at that level, it doesn't drive, it doesn't drive ratings, shall we say. It's not high enough to, to worry if you're an oil importer like Turkey or you know, Lebanon or something. And, uh, you know, but it's not, it's not high enough to actually pull the, uh, pull the ratings higher for the, for the oil exporters. So, you know, it's all about transitioning away from oil. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about that, but, you know, do you I think... see them on that scale? Um, you know, look, this is about employment generation. I think if, we, if we're talking about Saudi Arabia, it's really about employment generation. The labor force is growing very quickly. Oil doesn't employ a whole lot of people. Uh, it's a capital-intensive industry. It's not a labor-intensive industry. So the demog there's a demographic uh, imperative to, to look at diversifying the economy. The government can't provide the jobs. The oil sector can't provide the jobs. So you need a private sector to generate employment. As women enter the labor force, you've got another kind of initiative. So the labor force is growing very quickly. Employment opportunities are not. So I think that's, that's the real challenge in Saudi Arabia is generating those jobs. So we're in a higher interest rate environment. Some of these countries are less well-prepared for that scenario, who are we talking about? Well, are we in a higher interest rate environment? You know, the Fed has kind of slowed that, that down a little bit. I think that's something that's changed since December. Our view of what was gonna be happening in 2019, a couple of Fed rate hikes, dollar stronger. I think we've kind of had to change that narrative a little bit based on what the Fed has said so far. So maybe we see one interest rate hike later this year. We don't think the Fed is necessarily stopped. I think they've paused for a while. Uh, but as you say, it's a, it's a region that's dollarized, so the exchange rate doesn't quite matter as much. Interest rates do, but the exchange rate uh, maybe not so much. Focus a little bit then on the emerging market scenario, so particularly with Turkey, for example. We've seen so much political unrest and uncertainty, and that's really fed into the economic scenario of that country. Where are they today? Yeah, look, you know, I think one of the things we need to get used to is political risks and thinking about political issues generally. Uh, we used to think of them as sort of episodes in a country. Now it's more of a continuous kind of story. And it's something that's come up in the panels here is, is sort of populism, political populism. What does it mean? It is a shift, isn't it? Because I was sitting here last year and I get these ministers on board and they just refuse to acknowledge that political risk is something that's going to exactly. weigh more on markets or on oil. Exactly. And now they I can't think that get away refusal from it. to acknowledge it, you know, is, some, is something we need to, we need to really <laughs> acknowledge and think about what that is, what that means. When you think about it, technology, you think about disruptive technologies. Now we have sort of disruptive politics, right? And things can change uh, very quickly and, and invest Investors need to be aware of that it can happen. You know, there was there was talk in Europe of being post peak populism in, in 2017 with the election of, of uh, President Macron, right? I think now we know that maybe that was wishful thinking. That populism has not peaked, and it's something that we're going to have to deal with not only in Western Europe but but globally. So it's political risk is here to stay. Well, certainly, what's happening with Brexit, for example. I mean, I don't think anyone would have ever imagined that it would go on for this long and this hard. And earlier this week, I had the chance to catch up with the French finance minister. We spoke exclusively about this. He said they're not going to give any ground when it comes to helping Theresa May out here. I mean, where do we go from there? Uh, I wish I knew. I, 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 don't, I don't think anyone really knows how this is going to turn out. You know, and, and the, the worrying, the most worrying aspect of it is we're, we're 40 days away. 40 days away, and we don't know what kind of exit the UK is going to have from the EU, or if in fact the UK is going to exit the EU at that time, or there's you know, possibly news of an extension you know, as long as a year or so. We don't know. We really have no idea. I don't think anybody can pretend to know. Even the Prime Minister uh, of the UK doesn't know. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.